with the neck blocks in place we can attach siding. First step is to dampen each end of the siding on both sides with water. This makes it more pliable, less likely to crack. And now we're dry fitting the siding to the top to check for length and fit and things like that. So I place the siding uh, in the space between the kerfing and the top and about an eighth of an inch to the left of that pencil mark. Clamp it and now you see I push this, the top into my chest right at the waist portion. That lets you maneuver the siding around and keep the top stable at the same time. I pre-applied a piece of tape attached to the top surface facing down now and that secures the tail there so it doesn't pop off as it is otherwise very likely to do. Uh, that piece of tape further helps that process. And at this point with those two tape pieces of tape firmly in place and they have to be firmly in place um, then you can not worry about the side place you already did and you can check the length of the top. Here's uh, a typical problem, that's why we use tape. Okay, now we're ready to glue the sides. So apply super glue to, you can see that part of the neck block and that brace and about an inch or two along the kerfing there. We're going to do the gluing in stages. And here we fit the siding to that location, about an eighth of an inch to the left of the uh, pencil line. Uh, put the a block of any kind helps there to compress the siding against the top. And now I apply glue in stages. The length depends on the curvature. Uh, I go until the widest part of the upper bout. And a fairly generous amount of glue in there. Now pull the siding around and we're both we're pulling it both in towards the kerfing and we're also pushing it down to try to minimize the gap between it and the top. Now hold it very stably in place and apply accelerator. Hold that for 10 seconds and then we're ready to move on to the next section. So I go from the widest point of the upper bout to any roughly the widest point of the lower bout, but any point along it that's curved would be fine. Now push that in, tight to the kerfing, and also push down. You can see by uh, with the guitar top against my chest I can hold the top stable and get a good grip on things. I'm applying accelerator here. Continue the gluing and here you can go any length you want really. Um, I think I'm going to about the tail block. Not quite the tail block. Same deal. Pull it tight and push down. Apply accelerator. Now we're doing the across the lower bout. The best places to begin and end the, a glue job is at points of high curvature because that lets the next section be started easiest accelerator. When you apply accelerator, try not to apply it beyond the point you actually glue. That's because now when you lay this next bead of glue down, you don't want it to hit accelerator uh, right away. Otherwise it'll harden before you have a chance to um, put it in place. Of course all of this video is at twice speed. So accelerator and now the waist again. The waists are probably the hardest part to do because you're having to push into a concave space. It may, I'd probably recommend you use gloves because um, there is a tendency to get your finger stuck to the glue on the outside. And now we're ready for the last part of the upper bout. And we also do the matching region on the neck block. I don't go all the way up because I want some flexibility. Okay, there we are clamping the siding with another block, applying accelerator to the region we just did. Okay, you can check how well you did by looking at the gaps. If there are gaps, we can fill those with wood putty. Now this is the tail block. This is used to uh, provide an anchor point for an end strap, for example. 
glue on one surface and also glue where it's going to touch the kerfing below. And try to get it all the way down on the kerfing because um, there needs to be room above it for the kerfing of the back. And these are optional. This is a suggestion of Bob Taylor. Um, these two braces, the upper brace there and the upper part of the X, these are the most prone to coming loose over a lifetime of a guitar. So these stakes are there to reinforce the end of those braces and keep them from popping loose. So if you want, if you think your guitar will be subjected to a hard life or a long life, um, these are probably wise to do. They don't take very long and the braces are already made for you on the center table. Now I inspect the inside of the guitar and I look for gaps and I'm just going to fill everything, particularly the waist. And now we're ready to attach the back.